Hey everyone, a lot to get through this week. As you've probably heard, we had some major action on the House floor on a number of different fronts. First, we passed a government funding bill. Now, I promised Palm Beach County taxpayers that we would secure money to reimburse the county for President Trump's security costs that were associated with the time that he spends in Palm Beach County. We delivered on that promise this week. The government funding bill passed this week includes $61 million to reimburse the communities for, for additional security costs associated with the president's uh, presence in Palm Beach County. And, and I'm gonna continue to pressure leaders here in Washington to ensure that Palm Beach County receives full compensation. Additionally, the bill provides a lot of other great things. There's an additional $20 billion increase in defense spending that goes to the equipment for our soldiers that are out on the battlefield as we speak. And beyond that, an additional 2.5% pay raise for our soldiers. I wish the pay, way, the, the pay raise was even more, but I, I am very happy to say that, that our soldiers, our sailors, our, our, our Marines, our airmen, that they're going to go out there, our coasties, they're going to get a 2.5% pay raise. This bill also includes funding for border security. The single largest increase in border security funding in 10 years, and it ensures border wall construction of the exact specifications that our Department of Homeland Security and our Border Patrol has asked for. <clears throat> Beyond this, I think it's great to see that the Democratic Party worked so well with the Republican Party in order to build that, that wall that was requested by Department of Homeland Security and, and those that are working on the southern border. Uh, that's just one of the many layers of security that exists on the southern border, but I'm very happy that that was a place that, that the two sides could come together and, and work together. Now, one of the best wins, in my opinion, in the entire bill is the expansion of school choice. The bill renews the DC Opportunity Scholarship program. It increases support for, scar for, for charter school organizations and funds the implementation of the Every Student Succeeds Acts, uh, which shifts control and accountability for schools to state and local districts. And, and all of these, they're powerful steps to empower parents and empower students to, to get a better education. Now, I'm not going to say by any means that this bill, this, this budget bill, is all sunshine and roses. The bill spends too much. That's my personal take on it. I fundamentally believe that every spending bill should strive to spend less than the last bill. Now, this spending, this bill was uh, essentially a, a chomp at the apple that wasn't expected. Uh, President Obama did not do a full year uh, funding bill, so we ended up doing what is essentially a half year funding funding bill. But in the future, as we get to the the 2018 funding bill and moving forward from there. I will always be the staunchest advocate to make sure that we are spending less. That is that is my line. That is what I look for. And now to move on to something that I'm sure everybody wants to hear about, uh, because it's probably the biggest thing that happened here this week: the Affordable Care Act and health care and everything that's gone on, um, you know, with the replacement of the Affordable Care Act. The fact is, the Affordable Care Act it failed its promises to lower cost. It failed its promises to let people keep their doctor, to keep their plans. As a result, in Martin County and St. Lucie counties, there's only one insurance provider on the individual exchange. Let me say that again. In Martin County and St. Lucie County, there's only one provider on the individual exchange. Nobody is guaranteed any kind of insurance coverage if there is no insurance providers on these exchanges. That is just a very simple fact. And on top of that, the premiums have gone up on average about 25% this year. That is unaffordable for the people that live in our community. And I've heard from countless families, and I'm gonna give you an example of just one. Debbie from Jensen Beach, who reached out to our office after she saw her premiums double. Her premiums doubled. Her deductible ballooned to $12,000 under the Affordable Care Act. That is unaffordable for anybody. Now, the American Health Care Act, it delivers relief for families by ensuring that you get to choose your coverage. And the federal government cannot tax you based on what you think is best for your family. The bill returns control of health care from Washington back to you. It restores access to quality, access to affordable options that are tailored to your individual needs. <clears throat> I think it's one of the best things that we're doing as a result of it. Now, as a result, the Congressional Budget Office has said that this bill will absolutely, over time, decrease premiums by at least 10%. The bill does all of this by increasing, uh, by additionally increasing Medicaid funding for Florida, 400 to 500 million dollars. That's again, that's something that I want to say again. This bill, the American Health Care Act, increases Medicaid funding to Florida by 400 
to $500 million. That will go to help the most at-risk people in our community get the potentially life-saving coverage and treatment that they need. Now, like millions of Americans, I have a pre-existing condition. As a result of my time in the military, I lost both of my legs. I sustained uh, other internal injuries that will continue to in impact my health care uh, until I'm put in the dirt one day. And I care about this issue. I believe that it is my responsibility to be the staunchest advocate for people out there that also have pre-existing conditions, and I will be. This bill mandates that people cannot be denied coverage because of pre-existing conditions. And it allocates almost $140 billion in additional funding that will subsidize the coverage for people with pre-existing conditions to ensure that their costs are low. And that also drives down the cost of every single other person in the insurance market. This bill does this in a number of important ways. First, Guaranteed issue of coverage, guaranteed renewability of coverage, and the prohibition uh, of insurance companies denying coverage due to pre-existing conditions are all maintained. States cannot opt out of these requirements. <clears throat> Second, the American Health Care Act, as amended, very specifically clarifies that its provisions cannot be construed as allowing insurance providers to limit coverage for those with pre-existing conditions. All of these protections 100% remain in law. Third, the bill sets aside, as I said, nearly $140 billion to ensure that people with pre-existing conditions who could fall through the cracks have access to affordable coverage. In comparison, the Affordable Health Care Act, Obamacare, only provided $5 billion. That is a major change. Now, those clamoring otherwise are the same people who said, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. The American people were lied to. They, they, they were lied to in their face with those statements by, by very specific actors that came out and said they specifically preyed on the American people in order to, in order to, to pass what was known as Obamacare. And they are putting partisan politics ahead of people in our community. I will not stand idly by while well, this bill that helps Americans so much is attacked with lies. There are other lies out there that are attacking this bill. Here's one of those lies. I am hearing frequently that Congress has exempted themselves from this bill, and that is simply not true. One of the first lessons that I ever learned in the military was you never ask your men, your women, your soldiers to do something that you would be unwilling to do yourself or that you hadn't already done yourself. And I brought that lesson to me here with me here to Congress. That's why before we ever even passed the American Health Care Act, we passed H.R. 2192, which prevents members of Congress from exempting themselves from the American Health Care Act. I strongly support and co-sponsored this common sense bill, which is, by the way, it, it passed with the support uh, of, I think, nearly every single Democrat as well. Now, on a different subject, because there are other things that occurred, uh, one, uh, another big accomplishment this week came courtesy of the state government back in Florida. But it has as big of impact on our community and, uh, and ramifications up here in Washington, so I want to touch on that as well. As I talk to people in our community, the one issue that keeps them up at night more than any other, the lack of clean, safe water in our area, our waterways, they're irreplaceable treasures, central to the economy and the, and the quality of our life in our area, the water being discharged by Lake Okeechobee into the Treasure Coast, it is destroying our community. It's putting people out of business. It's killing sea life, and it's making people sick. This week, uh, the Florida legislator passed, passed SB 10 and committed to building a reservoir south of Lake Okeechobee. It's a critical step forward in our work to, to, to restore our lagoon and, and restore, restore our beaches. Now, I've urged Governor Scott to sign this bill. He would said that he will. And in my role as the vice chairman of the Water Resources and Environment Subcommittee here in Washington, I will be doing everything that I can, everything in my power, to ensure that the federal government matches Florida's commitment to clean water. What does that mean? It means that the federal government is matching that, that dollar commitment that Florida puts into to building that reservoir south of Lake Okeechobee, making sure that the federal government puts those dollars in as well. That is the specific job of, of the, the committee and the subcommittee that, that I am the, the, the vice chair on. 
Now back to the federal level. We passed three bills this week relating to FEMA. Right now in Florida, we're battling wildfires across the state. Uh, we're on the eve of a brand new hurricane season. That's just over the horizon. These FEMA reforms, they're critical to ensuring that the federal government fulfills its responsibility to help states recover when a disaster, tr when a disaster strikes. Now one in particular, HR 1678, it's very important for the Palm Beach County area. Unfortunately, Palm Beach County is still to this day fighting with FEMA to defend the legitimacy of disaster aid that they received following one of the worst, probably the worst hurricane season in the state's history more than 10 years ago. Now, it seems pretty common sense to me <coughs> that victims of a disaster or a national emergency should not be victimized again by their own government just because they lack a paper trail from a decade ago at a time when they were struggling to find food, water, shelter, that is common sense to me. HR 1678, it reinstates a three-year statute of limitations on the reclamation of funds when there's no evidence of fraud, waste, or abuse, uh, which is critical, critical for counties like Palm Beach County. Now, in doing so, the bill moves more of the onus uh, for record keeping and combating fraud away from the recipient and back on FEMA where it belongs, and that's the way that it should be. <clears throat> Off the floor, I participated in a number of hearings, a number of markups for the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, for short, we call Transportation and Infrastructure TNI. So on the TNI side, we held a hearing uh, with the United Airlines uh, CEO, Oscar Munoz. Uh, it is absolutely critical that we hold the airlines accountable for their abuse of consumers and ensure that nothing like the incident that happened just a few, a few weeks ago ever happens again. On the foreign affairs side, we passed the, the, the Caesar Syrian Civilian uh, Protection Act that holds the Syrian, uh, basically the Syrian human rights abusers accountable for their crimes. Now, I offered an amendment to, to that act, uh, which was adopted unanimously. And that amendment requires the president to report to Congress on important aspects of military strategy. While the president is evaluating the benefits uh, of further military action in Syria, it is critical that Congress has the information needed to uphold our constitutional responsibility. My amendment directs the administration to report on the goals and benefits of specific military strategies, like establishing a no-fly zone to protect the Syrian people. The bill passed Foreign Affairs Committee, and the next step is to vote on it on the House floor. Now, finally, I want to mention briefly, before we wrap up, that we're currently holding our online voting for the Congressional Art Competition, which is hosted every single year by Congress to highlight the artistic achievements of local high school artists. You can view the submissions and vote on them, www.mast.house.gov backslash art. So I hope you go there and do that. The deadline to vote is by the end of the day uh, on Sunday. There will be a winner announced on Monday whose art will hang in the Capitol building for the next year. I think that's going to be a great thing. Uh, as always, it is an honor to serve you. Uh, uh, it was an honor to serve you this week. I look forward to getting back to the district, to speaking all of you, to all of you to answering your questions on, on what goes on with the spending bill, answering your questions on what's gone on with health care. I can tell you this, when it pertains to health care, my staff and I, we spent hour upon hour upon hour reviewing the legislation, every single word of it, every single amendment, and I know how difficult it is to trudge through that. That's why I'm going to be more than happy to be there to answer the questions for everybody that they have and, and walk people through the concerns that they have and point to them. This is, this is where the, the bill points out these provisions and these provisions and hopefully get to you to a place that you are, are, are comfortable and that you can say, yes, this bill is something that's going to give us the relief that we need. So I'm very proud about that. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all back home in the district. Take care.